Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. New series this week. We are talking about avoiding burnout, starting with just simply time off. But I say simply, Adam, you know it's probably the hardest thing to do because in 42, 42 years of training, I have probably taken no more than a couple of intentional weeks off. Occasionally you get hit with an injury or something. You got to sit out a workout or two, or you kind of ease up a little bit, but to say, you know what? I think I'm just going to take a week off. I don't need to train or as a competitor to say, I think I'm going to take a year off. Like that is psychological death to those of us who love the game, love training, love to stay active. But uh, with all of your experience with clients, tell me what that really looks like. What, what, what kind of time off? How do you categorize that? And, and who is this necessary for? Yeah. Well, I find this with my more elite competitors. You know, there's people who kind of dip their toes into this and maybe they're not training that hard. Um, maybe dietary restriction isn't their cup of tea and you know they're just they're not in a state where they really need that much recovery um those are sometimes the people who i hate to say like kind of wimp out and say oh i need a week off from the gym you know every four or five weeks and they like the idea of competing um and then i have my elite competitors who you know you you had to beg them to take even you know, maybe even bring them down to five days a week training, maybe four, uh, they have an injury and they don't want to stop and they're grinding through it. That makes it really difficult because as much as these people want to progress and be a pro or be a top level pro, you know, no one's really showing their off day on Instagram. <laughs> no one's really highlighting that on their reel. So one, it seems foreign just because no one's posting about that. Uh, everyone's posting themselves grunting in the gym. But also, it still seems taboo, even with the newer research out there, that we do need that time off. I know you and I both agree that we don't really like deload weeks because you know, you just need some time out of the gym and you'll appreciate it so much more when you're back too. So if you can really talk yourself into that day or two off a week or those short weeks off here and there, you can really accelerate your progress. And most importantly, you know, you don't want to have to take steps back because of injury. And I just had that with a client where she hurt her back deadlifting and she was like, I want to go in this week and see how it is. And I said, I'm okay with that, but I think I'm going to change your next training block and not be as intense on the deadlifts because we didn't set you back, but we're probably on the verge. If we keep training like we are, we will. So let's kind of take a step back for a couple of weeks and then implement kind of something similar to what we're doing now with maybe a little less deadlift volume. Yeah, the, the biggest fight I have with clients is simply the unwillingness to take days off. Everybody wants to train glutes 100 times a week. Everybody wants to squat and deadlift now three or four times a week. And when I when I program for clients just in that micro cycle of a week, I, I get so much resistance. And, and it makes me wonder, gosh, what what if we presented the bygone era where competitors used to used to do traditional periodization where you would, you would compete, the Mr. Universe and Mr. Olympia, and then you would take three months off. You wouldn't even go to the gym for months. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people as as early, or I should say as late as Ronnie Coleman would do that, you know, after the Olympia. And man, I, you know, it makes me wonder with my own health and body orthopedically, like, you know, would I be in a better spot if I had channeled my energy that way? But like you said, and I'll throw it back to you for this kind of summary comment, the hunger that you get back, you know, the time when you really feel fresh and you want to go back into the gym. That's something that a lot of people don't feel. Mm -hmm. I, I did things so wrong from a training perspective up until maybe my last season. And that was my best season. And, and even then knowing what I know now, I think I overtrained a little bit then. I just, I wish I knew what I knew now, you know, and sometimes it makes me excited to think about getting back into the game, but luckily I can apply these principles to my current clients and that kind of takes the itch away a little bit. 
Yeah. And, and besides just time off, uh, those of you watching, listening, we're going to cover some things like variety and other ways to avoid burnout. But stay with us and we will see you for episode, episode two in Contest Prep University.